A two-year-old bear has been spotted wandering in Dixon, a small Russian Arctic settlement. The animal was in need of help. Its tongue was stuck in a condensed milk tin can. Apparently, the bear fetched it from a garbage dump after smelling its sweet smell. But the sharp edges of the can wouldn't let the animal free its tongue. And the desperate animal approached humans seeking help. To save the animal, a team of experts from the Moscow Zoo, located about 2,100 miles from the Arctic settlement, was dispatched to Dixon. The team sedated the bear with tranquilizers, carefully removed the can from its mouth with pliers, and treated the mouth cuts with antibiotics. The team also left 110 pounds of fish for the bear as a gift to help it recover from involuntary starvation. And all this, of course, sounds very sweet. Helping animals is cool, but if it weren't for humans, the bear would never have such a problem in the first place. A few years ago, members of an Arctic expedition to the Svalbard archipelago witnessed a frightening and very sad scene. Polar bear cubs were playing with a black plastic bag, tore it into pieces and chewed it. All this despite the Svalbard is located quite far from the mainland and its population doesn't even reach 3,000 people. It looks like the trash was washed up here by the ocean and then the bears dug it out of the snow somewhere on the shore. Bear cubs are like little kids, they're ready to play with anything. They tore the plastic bag apart, and each bear cub managed to eat enough of it to damage their health. Not to mention that studies have shown that ingesting plastic can make polar bears irritable and aggressive, possibly due to painful obstructions in their digestive system. And it's not just cubs who eat trash. Bears looking for food get into garbage bins and swallow everything from batteries to dirty diapers. They're ready to eat even ceramic plates if they're smeared with leftover food. Bears don't care that the nutritional value of garbage is less than perfect. They'll do anything to survive. This dependence on human-produced trash leads to way too many encounters between wild animals and humans. This inevitably results in conflicts. In 2019, a state of emergency was declared in Novaya Zemlya after 52 polar bears invaded human territory. They were spotted in the vicinity of the small settlement, with 10 of them constantly roaming around it. The bears literally chased the locals, and people were afraid to go out. They didn't even let the kids go to school. At the same time, the bears were no longer afraid even of police patrols which were supposed to scare them away. The bears not only approached buildings, they even went inside apartment blocks. After this, you might be expecting them to take hold of the settlement next. And you know, we can't rule out this possibility. Thankfully, bears didn't drive people away from their settlement this time, but they will gladly occupy any vacant territory. Photographer Dimitri Koch was sailing across the Chukchi Sea when bad weather conditions forced him to approach the abandoned island of Kaliuchin. Until 1992, there was a polar station here, but since it was closed, people abandoned the island entirely. And then polar bears took over. Using a drone, the photographer managed to capture some amazing pictures of animals that have taken up residence in abandoned houses. Well, or they could just spend time there, because bears are very curious by nature. By the way, it's the same reason why they're looking at the camera in the photo. The drone must have seemed like an interesting, weird bird to the bears. While this photographer chose to use the drone not to disturb the animals, other people, well, let's say, aren't as delicate? A couple of years ago, a video appeared on the web showing a polar bear on which someone spray-painted T-34. Apparently, the video was filmed somewhere in the north of Russia. The T-34 is an iconic Soviet tank that was widely used during World War II. But what the hell does a polar bear have to do with it? We don't know who and for what reason spray-painted the animal, but this actually put the animal at risk of starving to death. The reason's simple. During the hunt, these predators used their white fur as a disguise so that the prey wouldn't spot them. But how can you be stealthy when there are huge black letters and numbers on your skin? But the worst thing is that this isn't the only case like that. In 2018, before the World Cup, a Paddy Power employee painted the flag of St. George, that is a red cross on a polar bear. He also used spray paint, which is a disgusting thing to do. I've already explained how dangerous this entertainment is for the bear. And even when humans don't entertain themselves in such a cruel way, our mere presence doesn't affect the bears in a positive way. A year ago, there was a video showing a polar bear hunting and eating a reindeer. Doesn't seem too surprising, right? However, this has never been fully caught on camera before, because polar bears do not eat reindeer. Well, they just don't. It's not part of their menu. However, the behavior of that bear was conscious, and the predator was fully aware of what it was doing. 
The polar bear slowly crept up to the herd before attacking the male reindeer. The predator followed it to the water and eventually sunk its claws into the prey about 80 feet offshore. Though back in 2000, sources stated that polar bears don't attack Svalbard reindeer. Researchers believe that polar bears are increasingly opting for this prey due to reduced ice cover in the area. Rising air and sea temperatures causes the ice to melt, and due to this, polar bears are driven inland. Every year, they got to retreat even further. This means that they're cut off from their typical prey, seals. They have to look for another option, and reindeer, let's say they aren't the best choice. Seals are covered in a lot of fatty blubber, which is why polar bears target them. Because this fat provides a lot of energy required to survive in cold climates. Reindeer have no such fat. Keep in mind, bears also have to chase them. But this is not the worst case scenario. Some fear that due to the lack of usual prey, polar bears may switch to cannibalism. I even found some evidence of that. When polar bears, especially males, are trapped on the shore, completely deprived of food for long periods, they have to resort to desperate measures and eat their own cubs. True scientists are not yet 100% sure this happens more often due to ice melting. Perhaps it's just a coincidence. What researchers know for sure is that the lack of ice makes polar bears swim longer distances. Of course, they've been pretty good at that before, but it's different now. In the past, when the sea ice began to melt in late spring, polar bears migrated to land or coastal ice for the summer. But now, instead of moving on the ice flows, they're forced to make long swims. And by long, I mean freaking long. The duration of these swims ranged from 1.3 to 9.3 days and 32 to 250 miles in distance. The record was set by a female bear in 2011 who swam for nine days in a row, traversing 426 miles of water, its equivalent to the distance from Washington, D.C. to Boston. In the process, the female bear lost 22% of her body weight. And her cub? Yes, her cub migrated together with her. And this is normal practice, but not when the distance becomes so great. At some point, the little bear simply could no longer keep up. Scientists are certain these predators have never had to make such long swims before, if only because 426-mile stretches of open water didn't occur very often in the evolutionary history of the polar bear. Another problem associated with the melting of ice and changes in the habitat of polar bears has to do with unlikely neighbors. But this time, I'm not talking about humans. What about other predators? I mean grizzly bears. To be fair, not only polar bears are moving south, in their turn, grizzlies are moving north. For example, in 2004, grizzly footprints were found on Melville Island, about 620 miles north of the Arctic Circle. Grizzlies have never wandered this far north. And over the years, these predators have expanded their range even further. Most likely, they'll spend the winter in dens that polar bears use to give birth and raise offspring. After coming out of hibernation, grizzlies will certainly want to snack on polar bear cubs it's not entirely clear who will prevail in a fight, uninvited guests or formidable females guarding their offspring. On the one hand, grizzlies are more accustomed to the predator-prey relationship. On the other hand, polar bears are bulkier, and the lives of their cubs are at stake. So it's hard to make any predictions, it all depends on the particular bear. Although there are reports in the literature where grizzlies killed female polar bears in their dens. <laughs> However, the sharp decline in the number of polar bears is partly attributed to grizzlies invading their habitats. In about 50% of documented encounters, grizzlies have completely driven out polar bears. And yet, sometimes shared habitat leads to the exact opposite result. Instead of competing with each other, polar bears are breeding with grizzlies. This is not hard because the species are closely related, which means there should be no problems in terms of genetics. In the Canadian Arctic, only four first-generation hybrids and four second-generation hybrids have been observed over a brief period from 2006 to 2014. By second-generation hybrids, I mean the offspring that the first hybrids produced. Judging by genetic studies, such hybridization occurred in the past, which means that nature doesn't see anything wrong with that. Well, more or less. Grizzlies are better adapted to life in the forest, whereas polar bears are accustomed to life in the snow. Hybrids will probably be poorly adapted to either of the two environments. Their mix of coat color, teeth, and behavior will likely prevent them from being successful anywhere. Although who knows? Today the planet's changing so much that perhaps in a while, neither polar bears nor grizzlies will be there, while their hybrids will survive and spread at an alarming rate.
But here, as always, there's one big serious concern, human influence. No one tried to make any forecast as to what happens to hybrids, but things are looking grim for polar bears. When scientists were asked to guess what would happen to the planet if humans suddenly died out, their answer wasn't much of a consolation for the bears. Even if humans vanish entirely from the face of the Earth tomorrow, the climate will continue to grow warmer and drier. This means that conditions will push different species to different certain adaptations. Meanwhile, species that thrive in the cold will continue to suffer the same way they do today. Live in places with shrinking ice cover, share habitats with more successful southern relatives, make long swims, and starve. Paleontologists also believe that in the future, only species that adapt well to heat will be thriving, and polar bears and heat are incompatible concepts, which is why they're doomed. Well, the most depressing forecast points to the CO2 emissions that cause the ice to melt. If climate keeps changing at current rate, in the worst case scenario, the summer sea ice in the Arctic may completely disappear by 2100. This means the end for polar bears, seals, and other Arctic animals that consider cold places their home. We can only place our hope in the ability of animals to adapt. Polar bears might change the color of their coat due to lack of snow and thus remain on the planet. So they will have to work hard to do that. See you later.